Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a hanging light like this one that's got physics enabled. And so it'll swing back and forth realistically when something collides with it. Okay, and so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go over to Blender. I'll start out here by adding a plane. And I'll go to modeling mode and right click and subdivide, right click and subdivide. So now I've got these additional vertices here and I want to grab these uh, four in the center here, or I should say these, uh, these nine vertices in the center, these four faces, and I'm going to press G and Z and just drag this up, maybe by about this amount. And now I want to uh, go back to layout mode, go to modifiers, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And I'm going to set the levels to two and apply that and I'll go back to modeling mode uh, press A to select all and I want to uh, extrude this it's still just a two-dimensional plane so I need to extrude this and I'm gonna give it uh, just a little bit of thickness here and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, sort of a mount for uh, mount point on the top here so I'll grab uh, face mode and I'm gonna grab these four faces in the very center and I'll press E to extrude drag up a little bit like that right click here and dissolve faces to make all these one face now I can control B to bevel and uh, scroll my mouse wheel a couple times here and uh, I'll press C to clamp and that looks pretty good and uh, so I'm going to press uh, A here and go to mesh and clean up and merge by distance. So I just removed eight vertices here and that's from the, uh, the ones that I doubled up here when I beveled those edges. And uh, so next thing I want to do is add a UV sphere and I'm going to press S.25. Uh, uh, scale that down and uh, GZ to move this up a little. And uh, let's see here. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to set the materials here. I'm going to uh, go to materials, new, and call this uh, bulb. And we'll assign that to the selected uh, faces here. Now I'll clear the selection and press L here over the shade part. And we'll hit new here and call this uh, shade and I'll assign. And the last thing I need to do here, I'm going to go back to layout mode, right click this and go uh, shade smooth and go to object data, normals and cl uh, click auto smooth. Okay, so I'm happy with this and I'm going to export this as uh, hanging lamp model .fbx. So next I'm going to hop over to Unreal Engine and I've started a new project with the first person template. And I'm going to make a new folder here called Hanging Light. Uh, and in that folder I'm going to drag in my model from Blender. And okay, so it makes our bulb and our shade material here automatically and so I'll set those up. Uh, the bulb is going to be pretty easy. I'm just going to put this into emissive color, set it to a little bit of a yellow color maybe. And uh, I need to multiply this so it glows a little bit. Multiply it by uh, maybe 10. Okay, and now the shade material. Uh, this is going to take a few more steps. So the lampshade we want to set to a translucent uh, blend type here, blend mode. And uh, I want to set the shading model to thin translucent. All right, and it lets me know down here that uh, thin translucent materials must use surface per pixel lighting. So translucency lighting mode uh, equals surface forward shading. Okay. So under translucency, under lighting mode, I'm going to select surface forward shading 
and uh, it's happy with that. Now it says thin translucent materials require the use of thin translucent material output node. So that is a node I can just type in and get a thin translucent material and we'll plug in the uh, same color here as the base color and I'm going to set that to uh, a green here sort of a medium to light green and I can also set the opacity and I'm going to set that to uh, maybe 0.3 okay uh, so next thing I'm going to do here is uh, make the actor and so I'm going to right click blueprint actor and we'll call this the hanging light underscore actor. I'll open that up and the first thing I'll do is add a static mesh. I'll call that uh, the lamp and I'll set the static mesh to the hanging lamp model. And uh, next I'm going to uh, add a, uh, let's see, I'm going to add another static mesh. I'm going to call this the uh, mount. And I'm going to set this one to uh, just a cube. And I'll set the scale to 0.1 and drag it up here. So I'll set the, uh, the location to uh, 150 here. Okay, and next thing I'm gonna do is add a physics constraint. And for the physics constraint, I'm gonna set component name one will be lamp, component name two will be mount, and the limits for the behavior here I want to have, uh, I want it to be able to swing uh, back and forth. So X and Y motion, uh, not freely, but limited. And the Z motion is up and down and I want it locked. I don't want it to be able to move in the up and down axis. And so the limit that I want to set for the X and Y motion is uh, something like maybe 50 units. And uh, the angular limits here, I want it to be able to swing basically in all the dimensions uh, by a limited amount. Swing uh, back and forth and twist, and we'll leave these at 45 degrees, that'll probably be fine. And uh, these linear motor and angular motor, I'm going to set up to, um, to help return the position and angle back to zero on the lamp. So I'm going to set these to, uh, it's going to try to reach a position target of zero, zero, zero with a strength of 50, which isn't very much, but uh, it'll help when the, uh, when the lamp is swinging and starts to slow down, it's not going to stop off center. It'll come back to this zero, zero, zero target. And uh, same thing with this angular motor. I'm going to enable the uh, slurp and uh, the spherical lerp. And uh, same thing, we're going to target 0, 0, 0 for our orientation. Uh, strength of 50 might be a little strong. I'm going to put that one down to 25. And the other thing I'm going to do here is go to my lamp. And uh, I need to enable physics, simulate physics. And I'll set the mass to about 2 kilograms. And I'm going to put on linear and angular damping. I'm going to put about 0.3 for both of those. So this uh, will look uh, realistic when it uh, starts swinging around. And you can play with these numbers to get the, the more realistic look if this doesn't work for you. Okay, so next thing is uh, to connect the lamp and the mount here. I've got the physics constraint, but there's no visible connection. The physics constraint doesn't have any uh, graphical component. And so the next thing I'm going to add here is a cable. And the cable is the graphical component we need to connect these two. Uh, it's basically going to look like a wire or a cord or it could be a chain or, or whatever. And so I'm going to set the uh, start point here. I'll just drag the, the end up to 
uh, 150 here where the mount is. And for the end, I'm going to say attach uh, the end to component name lamp. And let's see here, I'll compile. And uh, we have the end location by default has this uh, offset of X100. That's why it's off to the side here. I'm going to change that back to zero. Uh, now that's in the middle, but it's actually going all the way through to the origin point of the uh, lamp which isn't really what I want. I want it to stop uh, up here in the mount. So I'm going to say um, end location can be, let's say it's probably about 50 units. Uh, yeah, that looks just about perfect. Okay, so now that ends right inside the mount here. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is change the cable width. It's a little bit wide here. I'm going to set this to um, 7. And I'll set the material here. Let's just use, um, I'll use this uh, first person projectile material. So it'll be this yellow color, the same color as the projectile uh, with our first person weapon. Okay, and for the mount here, I'll also set the material to, uh, um, let's say the, uh, the shade material as well. And uh, so the last thing I need to do is actually add the light component. So I'm going to uh, have the mount, uh, sorry, the lamp selected here, and I'm going to add a rect light. Okay, and the rect light, uh, first thing I need to do is rotate it. And I'll set the sizing here. Uh, I'm going to set the barn door angle to uh, maybe 60 degrees. And uh, I can see I rotated this the wrong way. I'll flip it around here. And uh, I'm probably going to actually scale down my lamp. So what I'm going to do is scale this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And uh, so now my rect light is actually fitting quite a bit better uh, uh, at the size that it was. So I'll just move it up a little bit here. And uh, that's probably good. I'm going to leave that like it is. I'll set the intensity up maybe a little higher here, say uh, 12,000. And uh, I could set the light color, but I actually like to use the temperature here. And I'll set this to 4,500 for a bit warmer of a light, a bit more um, yellow of a light, I guess, rather than the uh, uh, cooler bluer light. And uh, indirect lighting intensity, I'll maybe bump that up to 2. And that's probably pretty good. So I'll compile this. And uh, now I'm going to go back to my map here. And what I want to do is add a roof to this area. So I'm going to just select the floor, press Control w to duplicate it, and uh, just drag that up towards the roof here. OK, so I'm going to drag out my hanging light actor now. And uh, I'll put it uh, just up by the roof here. Oops. Okay. Yeah, that's probably good. And uh, let's just give it a try here. Uh, not bad. Need to make a couple changes here. So first thing is um, there's this sort of reflection going on here, and I think that's coming from uh, maybe the uh, maybe the sphere reflection capture. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so that looks a little better there. But uh, I still noticed that the cable kind of was a little bit loose. It doesn't really move with the, the way that the cable should be moving as a, uh, you know, compared to the way that the, uh, the lamp is moving. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that uh, actor back up here and I'm going to look at this cable and change the cable length here. So we'll tighten this up by making this a bit shorter, maybe 50. 
and the solver uh, iterations here, we'll put that to two, and that'll tighten things up as well. Um, and I'm also going to change in the physics constraint here on the uh, linear limits. I've set at 50. I'm going to change this to maybe 75 so it can move a little bit more in the side to side uh, motion. And I'll take a look at this. That's looking pretty good. And uh, so one more thing I'm going to do here is I want to increase the uh, amount of indirect light. So I'm going to select the rect light here. And uh, we'll turn up um, indirect lighting intensity to maybe 3. So some light should be coming through the shade and lighting up sort of the, uh, the roof and the area above the shadow line. There's definitely will be a solid shadow line where the, where the shade ends and the light comes from underneath the shade. Uh, but some light should be uh, penetrating through the top as well. So hopefully that will help with that effect and we'll check that out. Okay. So it's a little better, but uh, it's still pretty dark. And um, I think what we're seeing here is the, uh, we have no exposure because I think there's by default in the first person project here, let's see the post-process volume, brightness. Yeah, they've checked uh, exposure here to, uh, and set the min and max to one, which basically turns it off. So I'm gonna turn this back on by setting this to maybe 0.5 and uh, or maybe even more, maybe 0.2. Yeah, that's quite a bit better. Now we can see what's going on here. And yeah, we've got some light coming uh, to the roof here and above the shadow line, and then uh, unobstructed light coming below the shadow line. Okay, and so this is responding to physics, and uh, it'll also respond to uh, my player capsule here. Um, I don't think I can reach that right now by jumping, but uh, let's see here if I open up the uh, first person character blueprint. I'll find my jump uh, jump max count here. I'll make this say five so I can just uh, jump a whole bunch. And uh, let's see here. Okay, so now let's say I'm gonna contact the uh, lamp somehow. I'm jumping off here and oh, I ran into the lamp. Uh, okay, so that's gonna cause it to move uh, the same as any other force, right? All right, so that's pretty much wrapping it up here and uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments or uh, if you want me to do a specific tutorial on some other subject that you'd like to see, uh, let me know.